Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Custo query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the fifth video in the KQL Advanced series. In the last session, we went over string parsing functions built into the language. In today's session, we'll begin discussing how to perform custom string parsing. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. In the previous session, we used functions native to the KQL language to parse paths, URLs, and user agents. While those are convenient, there are many use cases where these functions won't solve the parsing problems that we're facing. Sometimes we have a string and we want to add something to each record in the field. When we need to add characters to an existing string, we can use strcat. This is short for string concatenation. For our examples today, we're using free data sets from the KC7 Foundation, which simulate logs from a small company. You can access these data sets and learn cybersecurity skills for free at kc7cyber.com. First, let's look at the employees table and we'll isolate the username and company domain fields. If we wanted to create a new field that joins the two fields together, we can use the string concatenation function. First, we extend a new field and give it an appropriate title. We use the strcat function and in this scenario, we can place the name of the field first, a comma, then the name of the second field. When we run this query, we can see that the strings in the two fields are now joined. If we wanted to add an at symbol between the two strings, we can add it in with quotes like this. When we rerun the query, we can see it added an at symbol between the two strings. If we wanted to add dot .com at the very end, we can just add another comma, add quotes, and enter dot .com. Now that we know how to add things to strings, let's see how we can take things away from strings. Let's go back to our original two columns. In this example, we want to take away the dot .med at the end of the company domain. We can use the trim function to take characters out of a string. There are three variations of trim. The regular trim function removes all the characters that you define from either the front or the back of the string. Trim underscore start only removes the characters you specify from the beginning of the string. And trim underscore end removes the characters from the end of the string only. In our example, if we want to remove the dot med, which is at the end of each string, we can use trim underscore end. We need two arguments in the parentheses. When we look at IntelliSense, it helps us remember what the two arguments are. The first argument defines what we want to take away. In this case, we want to take away .med, and it's in a string, so we put it in quotes. We place a comma, then define the second argument, which is where we want to take it away from. In this case, we want to apply it to all items in the company domain field. When we execute this query, we could see it gave the expected output. Now we know we can use strcat to add things and trim to take things away at the beginning or the end of a string. What if we want to take away one thing and add other things, then join the two strings all at one time? We can do this all in one line in KQL. Going back to our original two fields, we want the output to be a field titled email where the structure is username, at symbol, then domain. But we want to take out the dot .med and add .com. Since we only know about these two functions right now, let's see if we can pull it off in one line with nothing but these two functions. Later, we can learn an alternate approach. If we want to perform multiple string parsing functions in one line, we can chain them all together. It just takes some thought into the sequence of events. Let's start off with a strcat function, type in the username field, place a comma, then add or at symbol. We can place another comma, so at this point we'll be prepared to combine the second string. But if we do that, it will not have the suffix we want. 
as the next step in the chain, we can actually add the trim function to take off .med. We can type it in just like we did before, with the first argument being what we want to trim, and the second argument where we want to trim it from. We can add another comma, and the last thing we need to do is add .com at the end. Since we're already in the overarching stircap function, we can simply add the fourth element as .com in the quotes. When we run this query, we can see that the query went step by step, applied all the results we wanted to each record in the dataset. While the point of this exercise was to learn about stircat and trim functions, there are many more efficient methods of performing this task, some of which we'll learn in future sessions. With the skills we know from previous lessons, how could we approach this problem set differently if we weren't limited to using the two new functions in this lesson? What if we simply created a variable that included the string azurecresthospital.com and we use stircat to combine the two strings like this? Let's try one more example on a new table. Let's look at the process command line table, which shows processes run on hosts in the organization. Let's project the process command line field. We can see that some lines start with a drive and some lines start with a quote before the drive. What if we wanted to take away all the quotes that are the first character in the string? One option is to use trim underscore start. If you remember from previous lessons, the quotation is one of the special characters in KQL. If we want to reference a special character, we need to use an escape character before it, like this. If the character we wanted to trim was not a special character, we wouldn't need to do this. The second argument is where we want to trim it from. In this case, we put the name of the field. When we run this query, we can see the output has removed all the quotes from the beginning of each string. In this example, there were only quotes in the beginning of the string. If we also had quotes at the end of the string we wanted to remove, we could just use the trim function alone. And using trim, it removes both the start and the end, but doesn't take away the quotes in the middle. Even though we don't have any quotes at the end of each string, we could still run it and see it still takes away the quotes from the beginning, but does not delete any quotes in the middle of each string. What if we wanted to remove or even replace a character anywhere in the string with another character, or just remove all quotes in the entire string? We'll talk about how to do that in the next session. For homework, use any module from the free datasets at kc7.com. Use the employees table and first create a new field titled device. Join the name field with the host name field and add an apostrophe S after the name field and add a host name is in between both fields. The final output should be in this format. Post your query solution in the comment section to learn with and help others. That's all for today's session on stir cat and trim. In the next session, we'll discuss replace, split, and two upper. Then begin to talk about regex basics. See you in the next session. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.